want to know what God has to say. And, I, and if somebody comes to me and says, listen, i got a word for it. If I can say, okay, I believe this person is uh, a fountain that we can trust, mm -hmm. then I say, yeah, let me hear it. A lot of times after I do, I think, but at any rate, if no one has a hymn, I do have something. In fact, what happened to me this morning is God began to deal with me. And what I thought I was going to present is something totally, uh, well, not totally different, but it swelled into to something that there's no way that I can finish this morning. So I'm going to need uh, more time to finish it tonight. But if you will, this morning, uh, get ready to go to Luke 11 and uh, read one verse of Scripture. Luke 11, one there. You know, all Alan's words this morning um, have a lot to do with what's been on my heart. Um, we are, we do have the responsibility. And, you know, I think that uh, there's so much depth in what God wants to say in the words that Alan spoke this morning, far below and beyond what we what we see, that we really have to look deeper. Um, look at a loop. Did I give you the verse? No. 52? Well, then it's 52. <laughs> now did I give you the verse? Yes. All right, here we go. Woe unto you lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge, you entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering, you hindered. The lawyers were the ones that took the scripture and uh, defined it and interpreted it. Uh, this is not attorneys at law that we have today uh, that deals with, with uh, this was a religious or a theocracy, so the lawyers dealt with theology. So the lawyers of the day, it says the interpreters of the day, not only did you, have, you, have you taken away the key of knowledge and entered not yourself, but then you, you hinder everyone else that, that would enter because obviously you are the ones that are interpreting this. Now turn with me to uh, Matthew 15, 9. Matthew 15, 9. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Go with me now to Matthew 16. Matthew 16. 17. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and what's whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. He said to them, I give you the keys to the kingdom, and the keys to the kingdom come by revelation, Jesus said. Now we must be very careful of where we receive our revelation today, and how we receive our <coughs> revelation today. Look with me for a moment to 2 Peter, 2 Peter, the first chapter. Some of these I got pretty hurriedly, so let's pray that I got them accurately. 2 Peter, the first chapter, and the 17th verse. For we receive, for he received from God the Father honor and glory, when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice, which came from heaven, we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We also, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, 
wherein do you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth into a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. Now what he just said to us, Peter said, I'm going to tell you that on the mount we heard the voice of God and we got a disclosure from heaven's glory itself. But he said, but now let me give you a more sure word from the Lord. The Bible, the Scriptures, they are the mind, he said, of the Holy Spirit. So what is Peter saying? Peter's saying, you know what, we heard a voice from heaven speak to us. But let me tell you, there's a more sure word that you must go to. It's the written Logos Word of God, which is the mind of the Holy Spirit, brought forth through men. Now the point that I'm trying to make is we must be very careful of those that would tell us they've heard disclosures from heaven. And we must be very careful of the disclosures that we ourselves think we receive from heaven. Because if it does not wash and does not come out in complete agreement with what is written, it is not to be trusted. Everything must be filtered through the written Word of God. There's too many disclosures in our church world this morning. Just as there was too many disclosures then that would allow them to preach uh, for the commandments of God, the doctrines of men. So Peter said, always go to this. What has happened and did happen was that through disclosures and revelation, the church had lost the key that unlocks the door to glory. Still spouting scripture and disclosure and revelation, but having lost the key that actually unlocks that door. Through the gospel being interwoven, with the thoughts and the ideas of men, the key no longer fits the lock. And heaven becomes sealed. It is something that has happened, not just in the false prophets, that we would say, false prophet and identify. It's something that happens in the false prophet that whispers in our own ear. Because if it did not whisper in our ear, we would not believe it from the lips of the one we call false prophet. We decide what we want to believe. We must come to a time that we begin to read the Scripture of God as if we have never read it before. We must come to a time where we open this book as if, as if we had no preconceived notions that have come from our training or from our doctrine and make sure that we read it as a, in the purity of heart and mind that would say, what is your doctrine and what is your mind, God? Because if you will do that, and if I will do that, I believe we'll find that there are many scriptures that we ourselves have spouted, that we ourselves have relied on, that are out of the context of the truth of God. And this morning I want us to read some of those that are in truth. Jesus said in the 8th chapter of John, He said to, to the disciples, He said, if you will continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. 